So, today should be Christmas. And today we're going to be giving y'all a how-to tutorial on how to get your build up as fast as possible. It's going to be a lot of people that get the game on Christmas. So this is going to be the video for you guys, the Christmas noobs. Today I'm going to be going over everything in detail, how to get your build up, when you're getting badges, what badges you should put on to help you get more badges, and I'm going to go over everything in de detail. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple of different videos throughout this week for builds, but also for animations, but also good ways to get your VC up, another way to get your badges up, and how to get extra badges on both current gen and next gen. So if you guys want these videos, all you gotta do, like the video right now, smash it. I appreciate it if you hit that. If you didn't, you are up. It's just simple. Subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, though, let's hop into it. All right, so first things first when it comes to grinding your builds. Now, really, to be honest with you, if you wanna play online to grind your builds, the best place I would say is the wreck. But the best place to earn everything as fast, as quickly as possible may not be the most fun. Yes, it's going to be my career. My career is just going to be the best because what is it? Your career. And online, you're going to have to either play with other people that you're going to have to play around and you're going to have to guard other people. Now, I guess you could play the 1v1 courts, but let's be honest, the 1v1 courts are not always the you know what I'm saying, the easiest things for new people to the game. So what I would say is play my career. Now, when it comes to my career, the main thing that you really need to understand is what difficulty to play on. Me personally, every single 2K I hop on, I put it straight to Hall of Fame. Why? Because you get the most XP and VC as fast as possible. Now, there is other ways to go about this. Now, I have friends that not maybe as cultured to 2K as me. So they might not play on Hall of Fame. Maybe they go to Superstar, All-Star, it's really on you. But what I say is, they do have a Ricky, but you're gonna get significant, sick. Now, you're not even gonna get like an even. It's gonna be below like a multiplier. It's gonna be like a negative multiplier, almost. Like you're gonna get significantly less, but it's gonna be significantly easier. So there's a scale on how much XP, how much VC you can get. And this is all for badges, for your overall, your VC. This is all gonna affect all that. So you need to figure out what is the best thing for you. Maybe you test each one before you figure this out fully because it's going to take like a couple games on next gen to get the plus four badges anyway current gen you got to play a couple games anyway to become a starter so i'm gonna just say what you really gonna want to do is figure out what's the perfect um thing for you i put it on hall of fame because it gets you the most but i know that's not gonna be the best thing for everybody all right so the way these videos usually go i usually break it down in order from finishing shooting playmaking and defensive because depending on what your build is you may need that now to be honest on this game you don't really have to do it like that but since we're not gonna do it like that and you don't have to, I'm gonna give you guys what I think is the fastest and what is just universally known as the fastest. The best way to do it is to throw lob. It doesn't really matter what you are. If you can just do a simple pick and roll, run at the rim and just throw a lob to your person, a person on your team that's a lob catcher like a Giannis, a Bam Adebayo, Anthony Davis, just anybody that's super tall and athletic, they're gonna work really well. Now, what you can do is before you pick your team, you can go through the rosters and see who has the highest area wizard because that's the new lob catching badge. That's gonna be pretty much the easiest. When I did this, I was just messing around watching a game and I ended up getting 90K playmaking with 120K overall. And that was like my third game in my career on that build and I didn't have my pass accuracy max. My pass accuracy on that build only went up to a 70. So it's not like you have to have a crazy pass accuracy to do this. It's not like you have to have a crazy high overall to do this. You can do this off the rip. It's just that simple. But what the thing is, you got to know what you're doing. So when it comes to doing for these lives, now there are going to be certain teams where it's throwing lives are just not going to be as fun. Like if you play for the Heat, majority of the first couple games, you're not even going to be able to play with Bam. So what I did in those games, I went for other badges that just suited the play style of the people that played with me. So forcing lobs can be kind of annoying depending on the difficulty. That's why I said went over that first. But if you get this stuff right, you'll be fine. So what I like to do is um, either I call for a lob in the middle of the court. But when I do it, as soon as I get past half court, I call for an ISO. If you don't know how to call for ISO, I'm pretty sure you click on the left stick and the plays come up. But I got it down in muscle memory. So I'm not all the way sure. So what you can do is press LB. Yeah, LB. And then press the button that you are. Now, 
you will have to be a point guard to call play. So I'm only only do this if you are a point guard. If you're not a point guard, you're not going to do it until you have on court coach. So if you can't do that, just call for a screen. Pretty much that simple. But if you can, make sure that you call an isolation for yourself to get everybody to spread out as much space as possible. Call for a screen. Now, if there's two people in the paint, it's going to be tough to do it like that. You're probably going to have to go to a hash. Now, the hash one is different, but I'm going to go over this real quick. So, say, for instance, there's only one person in the paint. You call for that person that's in the paint to come set you a screen. If there's not the person that you want to come, the person that's in that paint should get out the way when that person that you want to set you a screen sets you a screen. So, what you're going to do is, what I used to do is, I used to just go the opposite way of the screen. But the way Hall of Fame CPUs have played it the past two years, you can no longer do that. You have to use the screen. Now, if you can actually get around the CPU without using the screen, that's going to be a more automatic lob because the person is just going to slip the screen. He's not going to have to hit nobody with a screen, so you don't have to wait for him to get through it. You can just see them go straight to the goal, and you can just throw the lob. Now, for the people that have to do it, two people standing at the rim, and they won't get out the way. What you have to do now is you have to go to the hash either call for a screen there if you can't call ISO or go to the hash and call ISO let everybody get out the way then call screen pretty much that simple now at that point it's really simple all you're gonna do now is pretty much make sure that they're screening you towards the right like if you're at the hash the hash is on your left side the out of bounds is on your left side you're calling for the screen on your right and you're gonna go straight to the corner if you're on the right side and the hash and the hash is on your right side the out of bounds on your right side, you're gonna call for the screen on your left side. You're gonna go straight to the corner. Now, say for instance, you wanna do it the other way around. You don't wanna run straight to the corner. You wanna be able to go to the rim to get the um the double, which is pretty much attack assist. You wanna go towards the rim. You're gonna pretty much have to call for the screen and go towards the screen. So, yeah, that's just gonna have to be how you have to do it. So, you would still call it for it the same way. You just wouldn't go the same way as you would the other way. So, hopefully, y'all understand that in full detail. At that point, you kind of understand what to do after. You would throw the lob at a certain point when they get to a certain point. You don't want to throw it too early, too late. There is perfect points to throw lobs. Now, another thing I can give y'all as a tip for lobs, when I throw it back, pause. Yes, that sounds crazy. But yes, when you actually flick the left stick down and when you're throwing a lob, double Y or double triangle, you're going to get a contact lob a majority of the time. That's from my experience. That's the best way to get contact lobs. And contact lobs are honestly the best way to get a high efficiency on these lobs. Because if you don't put them in an animation, majority of the time, depending on the difficulty, the person that's right under the goal will try to, every single time, steal that pass. The way that you can try to cancel that is making them go for a contact alley-oop. That's the best way I think of going about that. Now, now that we got playmaking out the way. Playmaking, I mean, not really fully out of the way. You can also do flashy pass assists. That's a really good thing to do, but lobs, easily the best thing. Now, there is a cap to that stuff, but you shouldn't have to really worry about it. You get 25 plus lobs, you're going to have a lot of XP regardless, I'm going to be honest. But if you do get past 25, you can stop or you can just keep going. The, the cap is not nearly exaggerated as it has been in the past years. You can keep just keep throwing lobs. It's not that big of a difference. So, the next category, we're just going to now go play, not playmaking, but finishing, shooting, then defense. We already went over playmaking. So, for the finishing, finishing is simple. Contact dunks or lobs. That's simple. Now, I'll be honest. Catching lobs is very easy. I would honestly say lobs is going to be easier for the majority of the people watching this video than getting contact dunks. Because contact dunks is kind of random if you're not using the meter. Um, and meter, the dunk meter took me a month to really get down to the way I got it now. So, I'm going to be honest. I would personally say you would definitely rather go with... the lobs i don't know why it took me that long to say that but yeah you would definitely rather go with the lobs so going with the lobs is definitely gonna be the one now what you want to do is either pass the ball to the corner or pass the ball you want to call like a iso now there are ways to make like your team call like a five out which a lot of people have figured that out if you want to figure that out i'm not the video to figure that out you can look that up figure out how to call iso plays and stuff like that and that's gonna be probably the easiest way to do everything whether you're um, trying to throw lobs or catch lobs. It's gonna be the easy way to ISO. It's gonna be the easy way to get. It's gonna be an easy way to do pretty much everything in this game offensively. If you want to play my career five out, it's gonna probably be the easy way. It's gonna get you easy rim runs. It's gonna get you easy content dunks. It's gonna get you easy lob catches. It's gonna get you easy lob passes. All that. So if you want to figure that out, just look up how to five out NBA 2K23. You can put my career on there. 
and you'll find a video for that. I promise you. But once you figure out how to get like the perfect everything to be able to catch lobs, I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna get easy. Now, one thing I say about my career, I didn't go over this for the lobs. The CPU, if you throw too many lobs in too many games in a row, that those teams will now start playing those lobs extremely heavy. You shoot too many threes, too many games in a row, those teams will start playing those threes extremely heavy. Like if you do a certain move to do a three every single time, they'll do that. You go for content. Now, one thing I say is content dunks is one thing that I haven't seen the CPU be able to guard at the same rate as like a, a lob or as like a, you know what I'm saying? That's just really that simple. So you all, you gotta understand that CPUs are gonna start playing this. So that's why I say go for content dunks. Content dunks is the one thing that just takes skill and it's not really much the CPU can do to stop it. You're just putting them in a animation with the dunk meter. Once you get the dunk meter to work, you're gonna be fine. Now dunk meter for the people that haven't played the game yet, it's up, down, instantly, but you gotta hold it. You gotta do it instant, like up, down on the right stick, up, down. Like you gotta do it quick. If you don't do it quick, it's not gonna work. And you wanna do it like, fast and hold it you want to hold it as soon as you see the meter pop up you don't even have to have shot meter on at all and it will pop up every single time regardless because it is the dunk meter it is its own thing now that's pretty much for the finishing if you want to do anything else layups are really good like acrobatic layups on 2k23 are very overpowered so if you want to get extra xp for finishing you can do acrobatic layups like double clutch layups you can do any euro layups you can do hop step layups you can do pretty much any type of acrobatic layup but the easiest one i would say is definitely the double clutch layups where you just go up and just tap x or square multiple times and your dude just double clutches pretty much jellies or whatever you want to call it so yeah that's the finish shooting wise is pretty simple um if i'm on a spot up i just pick and simply just pick and pop every single time i'm open i'm pulling simple pretty simple um, you can do catch and shoot. You can do a lot. Now, what I would say though, spot ups, it's gonna be a little bit tougher for you. But if you can get the LeBron hot back, the the Damian Lillard hot back, that's gonna be the best way to get your shooting badges. Just run at the person, hot back. Run at the person, hot back. That is the thing that's gonna work. Now, the only time they ever really start to stop that is after a couple games, and they don't even stop it in the first half. They'll really only stop it in the second half of the games. That's the only time. That's when you really want to start throwing the lobs because the lobs are going to be free every single time. That's how I started to kind of pick up how easy lobs really were in NBA 2K23. So, yeah, running at somebody, hot back is going to work nine times out of ten times to get wide open. Not open, not lightly, wide open. But you can green lightly contest it. Opens. I rarely get opens on 2K23, though. I will say that, but, yeah. So yeah, this will also all be varied based off difficulty and stuff like that. So yeah. Now, one thing I'll say why you want to do those hotbacks, because majority of those hotbacks are going to launch you to limitless range. Limitless range gets you extra XP. It's one of the ways to get the most. Now, another way to get the most is a fade. Now, fade is like a moving, like three ball, moving mid range. So you want to do a moving three ball. Now, you will get XP for standstill three balls. You will get XP for limitless range threes. You will get XP for moving three pointers. So all three of those things are three different things that you can get XP for. So say for instance, if you do a standstill limitless, it'll give you XP for a standstill limitless and a no, it'll give you it'll give you XP for a standstill three pointer and a limitless three. That will be two different things. But if you do a moving three, it'll now be a moving three. Now the thing I say about shooting that's the most important for real, the missing. The more you miss, the less total XP you will get. So, the less you miss, the more XP you get. You can make 30 shots, but if you take 50 shots, you'll get less XP than somebody that made like 15 and only missed like one or two shots. So you wanna make sure that you miss as little as possible. If that means you're gonna shoot less, shoot less. It's that simple. And last but not least, the defensive. For the defensive, not, it's, not, it's not difficult at all. I'm gonna be honest. The defense. It's quite self-explanatory. What do you do on defense? Stats-wise, steals, blocks, rebounds. Those are the main three things that you have to do. Now, defense is really going to be based off how many badges you get. But what I did off-rip, if you're a guard, I would say go for, like, bump steals. If you're big, just play big in the game. Get rebounds. Get as many block shots as possible. You're going to get a lot of defensive badges. Now, one thing I say for bigs, bigs, 5v5 rec is going to be the way for you easily the best way to get badges in the game you're gonna get like 20k a game easily probably 50k total in a game easily regardless i'm gonna be honest 
Breck is really, really easy for you bigs. I'm gonna be honest. But for everybody else, even locks, I'm gonna be honest. Locks, if you have like a really, really high steal rating, 5v5 Breck might be for you as well. Like, plucks are really good on 2k23. Passing lanes are really easy on 2k23. So anytime you just tip a pass, that counts. Anytime you get a steal, that counts. Anytime you get like a poke ball loose, that counts. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff counts. Chase down blocks counts. A block counts. You know what I'm saying? Snatch blocks, those counts as well. So you get a lot of different XP for the different type of rebounds. Or not the different. Well, I guess offensive defense, but I don't think it's like that. I think the only thing that's different is like the different types of blocks, different types of steals. And that's pretty much the determining factors on how to get as many defensive badges as possible. Now, you may be like, I could have did this myself. Because you could have. Defense is really self-explanatory. There's only like methods to get more bump steals. So what I do to get more bump steals, either I go to a zone or I switch myself onto whoever brings the ball up the court so I can be able to do that because I don't want to get leave assignment because at the end of the day, all this being said, um, no matter if you're going for finishing, playmaking, shooting, if you have, and you're trying to go for like a high, like you're trying to get as much XP, total XP, not bad progress, bad progress, all this stuff can go towards bad progress and you won't even have to worry about your teammate grade winning the game. But you will get extra for winning the game teammate grade and opponent difficulty all three of those things can take you from like 60k to 90k if you're playing the right difficulty i'm telling you like it really does matter so don't troll yourself when making like the grind for yourself easier or harder that's what i'm saying so yeah i just want to make sure that everybody understands that y'all understand that we cool we cool I'm going to give y'all the bad suggestions from the last video because I did just record it. But I wanted to make sure I re-recorded everything right here for y'all because I do acknowledge that it's going to be a lot of Christmas news getting the game today. And for the people that want it in the future, y'all can be able to watch this video. I don't know how many more times I'm going to update. I've updated this every single season. I just updated this for this season, but it is the halfway point of the season pretty much. So it's only right that I update this for the Christmas news. The people that are just getting the game want to be able to help as many people as possible. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty much the end of the video. Like I said, I will have the badge recommendations at the end of this video. Let me know in the comments down below. I didn't plan on doing this, but I can. If you guys want me to re-rank every single badge in this game, I can do that. If you guys want me to re-rank every single takeover in this game, I can do that as well. Just let me know. And I got y'all boys. I can also do the bad setups as well. So let me know. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys want more videos like this, like the video, subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications to be the first to all the videos. Share this video to anybody, and I mean anybody. You think it would help. I do appreciate how crazy y'all boys been going in Christmas. Um, I've been giving y'all codes throughout the whole month for Christmas. And I'm going to give y'all more than ever on this video because what is it? It's Christmas. So, yeah, hopefully all y'all people that watch the videos, all the Christmas y'all watch throughout this video. Hopefully the people that's already seen the previous ones didn't watch this one because this one is a special one for the Christmas noobs. So, hopefully y'all didn't go too crazy and try to take the codes on this one because I did put multiple on this one unlike the other ones. But I do appreciate y'all boys showing the support that we have been getting in December. I'm going to slow down when December does end, especially with the videos, but not going to be no more calls. So do not expect that. That is just a December thing for the Christmas special. But yeah, um, that's going to be the end of the video. Like I said, like, subscribe, comment down below, share the video, all that good stuff. Further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. And I've been, man. So I was checking my analytics. Even with 100k, we still have 80% of you guys not subscribed. I don't know what else I got to do. Now, if you guys want to get more in touch with me, you can join the Discord. But how you watching my videos and not subscribe? Subscribe! It's that simple. All right, so last but not least, I'm be honest. I've been doing these 99 overall methods for so long. I remember when I first did these, and this was like one of the first videos that blew up on my channel. But when I first did it, y'all were like so mad. I was giving y'all bad suggestions at the beginning. And I honestly wish I still did it because it would make more sense when I'm going over the method. So yeah, but we can put this at the end for the people that gonna complain. I'm gonna be honest. So yeah. When it comes to the bad suggestions, we're going to go over badges that can help you get 
more badges as you go. It's not badges that you have to have. These are just badges to su that I'm suggesting as you are getting badge points doing these methods that I showed you guys to get you even more badges. It's just that simple. So for finishing, when it comes to finishing, it's quite obvious, it's quite easy. When it comes to finishing, the main badge you're gonna want is posterizer. You see, I got it cord, I'm gonna be honest. When I got this cord, it was very tough to get. I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to, oh, another thing when it comes to getting cord badges, let me go over this real quick. All core badges really is, if you ever see a badge pop up, that is going to be helping the progress of that badge's core badge. That doesn't actually mean that it's activating. That is just popping up strictly for core badge. So if, for instance, a badge like Limitless Takeoff never pops up, so it's going to be really tough for it to pop, to really get it uh, cored. See, for instance, I have it. I've been on this build since the first day the game came out. I still don't even have it cored bronze. So that's a really important thing for y'all boys that are grinding 99. You're going to be trying to get core badges as well. So you got to understand that just because a badge is not popping up does not mean it does not work. I've, ha I've been using Hall of Fame Limitless Takeoff. Look, it's a tier two badge. I've had it on since I pretty much had the build. It's one of the first badges I put on. I couldn't put Posterizer on first, so I was throwing that on and Slithery. So yeah, it's really simple. But... All in all, um, main thing is, though, you want to have posterizer for finishing to get more content dunks. If you're a big man, you're going to want uh, Rise Up to get more content dunks. Posterizer is really for driving dunks. Rise Up is for standing dunks. Those are going to be really good XP, like I said in the video. Area Wizard, that's going to be helping you catch more lobs, and that doesn't really matter if you are a big or a guard. It's going to be very easy to help you catch more lobs. Now, Badge Light Limitless Takeoff is going to help you a lot when it comes to like driving dunks. Not gonna really make the biggest difference on anything else, you know what I'm saying? But it will get you more dunks and stuff like that. Um, and then everything else, it doesn't really matter. I, I guess that's really on you. If you want to make more layups, I guess fearless finisher. If you want to make more crazy acrobatic layups, which actually does get you more XP, you can go acrobat. But yeah, that's really on, on you. Now, shooting wise, um, shooting badge wise is really simple. I'm gonna be honest. Um, no matter what you are, you're gonna have green machine, green machine max. And everything I'm showing you guys, just put it to max. I'm gonna be honest, because these are badges that's just gonna help you. If you're not greening, you're missing. Now, depending on the difficulty, you can not green, but if you're proing up, you pretty much gotta green. Like, even at pro, so yeah. Um, another badge is Agent 3s, but this is really more for the guards. If you're really not a guard and you're playing off ball, maybe you're picking and popping in my career, whatever you're doing, you don't really have to play my career to use these badges to get more badges. You can play anything and use these badges to get more badges, and it's going to make it a lot easier and stuff like that. So, yeah, Agent 3s is good, but you also can go catch and shoot. You can go clay more. Those are also some really decent ones as well. Um, if you want badges that's actually going to help you shoot in a lot more situations because you do have to green, besides Green Machine, Clutch Shooter is a good badge, depending on how many shots you're taking. Uh, Vom Shooter is another good badge, and that's pretty much all I can really guarantee you is going to help you a lot. Now, for when you do get your shooting down and all that type of stuff, Limitless Range also does help you get like more badges. So if you're shooting from a deep, it's going to help you get more badges. So Limitless Range badge is going to help you shoot from deep, which in theory is going to help you get more badges. So yeah, that's another great one that you can also use to get more badges playmaking wise this is the big one i'm gonna be honest very easy you're gonna be using special delivery special delivery as high as possible i did it i bro on this build when i did it i didn't even have it but like silver and i got like over 100k i'm telling y'all bro if y'all use the method you're gonna go crazy i'm telling you you're gonna go crazy and i'm telling you you put special delivery with needle threader it's really nothing you can do i'm not gonna lie i keep doing that on accident because i'm clicking the right stick instead of the left but yeah special delivery needle threader all these badges are great to have on in these a lot of situations now um special delivery also doesn't help you with just lobs it also helps you with flashy with also gets you a tremendous amount of xp now if you want to help your teammates hit even more shots in a half court setting dimer is a good badge um but i'm gonna be honest if you want to you don't really have to even waste more than these two badge slots special delivery in needle thread and you'll be fine quick first step is gonna help you speed boost that can help you get more finishing that can help you get more shooting as well so that's really on you um vice grip can help you get better catch animation for catching and shooting so i guess that could help you get more shooting as well but all in all, I'm going to be honest. I guess big man, they could use break starter. Big man, they could use post playmaker if you're like a post scorer or something like that. But 
all in all that's pretty much all the badges you could really use for playmaking to help you get more playmaking i would really just mainly say special delivery and needle threader and then last but not least is defensive rebounding defensive rebounding is very simple i'm gonna be honest because all you're doing is getting steals and blocks so if you're going for defensive rebounding the badge i would probably say you want to use mainly is glove yeah because it's gonna get like get you the pokes now intercept is gonna help you because like passing lanes for in those situation but i would mainly say glove when you're going for blocks that's gonna be anchor and chase down anchor is gonna get you a lot more blocks in general chase down is just gonna help you get more chase down blocks in general so yeah but mainly anchor will be the thing for that but yeah um and then last but not least will probably be i guess you can go clamps to get those body up wins brick wall to get some extra stuff like that but mainly the things that you want to put on glove anchor chase down artist and rebound chaser rebound chaser is amazing because it's just gonna help you get a lot more now if you do uh, they, 2k added a lot of new stuff so if you go through a screen successfully you'll get points for that so pick dodger could be another badge you put on because if you go for, against a, a team that sets a lot of screens like the warriors you can get a lot of points for a defensive off of just getting screen so you can also do pick dodger as well but rebound chaser is a really good one as well because yeah it's gonna get you a lot more rebounds and rebounds get you xp every single time you rebound so I, i'm telling y'all y'all want to make y'all want to make sure to take advantage of every single rebound opportunity i'm telling you you're going to want to average like 10 rebounds doing this i'm gonna be honest and yeah that's pretty much all the bad suggestions i got for y'all boys it's that simple tell them to bring me my money yeah